Racers and Rental Cars Podcast with your host, Top Fuel Cam, Cameron Bray, and his co-host, Mr. Top Sportsman, Don O'Neill. What's going on, Don? What's up, Cam? Just living the American dream. The American dream. Episode five. Well, we maybe it, it should be maybe it should be the Canadian American dream. Yeah, I don't say you. You must be somewhere where your wife can't hear you. So <laughs> is it like can? So like, is it always Canada first or American first? As long Which as one? as long as hockey's on, she doesn't care. Oh man, come on. Dude, she was pissed what? off last night because uh, we tried to watch the Oilers game and we have like the NHL app where you get like every game or whatever. Well, right. because it was a preseason game, it was on like a block out thing and we couldn't get it on Apple TV. Oh, she was not happy. Better get yourself a fire stick. Dude, I know. Well, we have one, but it. Not. Is it jailbroke? Yeah. I got it. Man. I got it from the peeps. You know, we got a guy. You got a guy in California. We got a guy for everything you know i am here to tell you i am upset we came back last week after being gone for a couple weeks on the road and my fire stick went through an update and got rid of terranium tv that happened to a lot of people actually oh my god i am so upset i've got to find something else to replace terranium tv yeah yeah we we use it and all that because we don't have cable like we're never we're not home enough to pay freaking two hundred dollars a month bucks. yeah for cable so we just have apple tv and like the channels that we want to watch so yeah and yeah, then that for thing. sure yeah yeah i need yeah so if you tuned in to hear uh racers and rental cars podcast uh we've turned into don needs to find a replacement for a training tv podcast yeah how to how to hack the system god i'm so upset love my fire stick dude love it Mm-hmm. All right, what are we talking about? Uh, today, I thought we could maybe talk about like the differences between NHRA drag racing or just drag racing in general versus other forms of motorsports. Like what what drag racers do that's good versus you know Supercross, NASCAR, dirt track, or whatever. Like me personally, I'm a fan of all forms of motorsports. I am a super fan of Supercross. I love Supercross. Um, NASCAR, I mean, I'll watch it if it's on, like, but I appreciate racing in general. So like, I appreciate what they go through and all that. And, you know, same thing, pretty much anything. Sprint cars are badass. Like, so there's a lot of forms of motorsports that people can get into and do. Yes, we're heavy on the drag racing side because that's what both you and I do. Um, I have a little experience in the moto world and BMX world, but, and then I have got friends that race all kinds of crap. Sprint cars, dirt modifieds, whatever. I mean, drifting. I don't. I'm not even sure if that's considered a motorsport. But I guess we could get into that. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I mean, I think. God. I mean, I guess you could say that I appreciate motorsports too. I just. I guess I'm not a fan of all of motorsports because who has time for that? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I couldn't tell you who the hell was winning the points championship in anything other than Supercross and drag racing. But when it comes, like, yeah, NASCAR, I have no idea. Like, yeah, and Dale Earnhardt is he? Darren Earnhardt Jr. is he still racing? No, well, yeah, it is go kart track uh, (laughs) in Mooresville. But uh, you know, I mean, that's my biggest thing is that I just don't have time. Like, so. I guess in the winter time, I do watch motocross some, and I like watching anything dirt related that's indoors because I think yeah, chili it's winter time. Yeah, right. You know. Now, does that mean that I would go do something like that? Only if somebody else was paying for it, I think it would be way cool to oh, at least yeah. try it. I always tell uh, everybody I want to get into sprint cars, but everybody that I know that has a sprint car, they say, "Well, you better buy six chassis." <laughs> right. You know. I, I mean, that's for real, and so. But, I mean, they all have their own little quirks of of having fun. I guess for me, though, my love of drag racing probably was from the standpoint of the shortness of economics. I mean, how many people think about that when they when they apply to what sport they love? Because you got to think like a a motocross guy 
You know, what's a motocross guy going to have? Two, three motorcycles? You know, maybe. I mean, so what's each one? I mean, I don't know. What's the cost of a motocross bike? What's a, what's Dude, a this, two fit? Yeah, this day and age, shit. Like a brand new KTM or something? I think it's like 10 or 12 grand for off the showroom floor. I almost croaked. Right, but but saying that, you know, but yet I, I have somebody, a fifty thousand dollar race car too. So <laughs> right, so that's why I say, you know, you get two or three of them, you got forty grand invested, oh, yeah. right? Where we've got fifty or sixty, seventy, eighty grand in a car, um, and and the, off you go. Same thing with dirt track. You know, that's why I think I don't think I ever really took even coming from the south. It was fun to watch, but. Man, those guys beat and bang, tear stuff up, and then their, you know, their crew or their family or whoever it is, they're working all night long, all week long, trying to put cars back together right. to go do it again. Yeah, and I'm to going go smash the thing up. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I appreciate all forms of motorsports because of what they go through. Now, am I a super fan of them all? No, but what's funny is when I first got into racing, like I, you know, had the chunk of money like from the acting stuff and i could pretty much go wherever i wanted right i could drag race i could go race quarter midgets i could race go-karts whatever but there was something about drag racing that i always loved and that's why i picked it and you know sometimes do i wish that i maybe should have picked quarter midgets or go-karts when i was a kid because there's more opportunity that's the only downside that i see with drag racing is NHRA, Top Fuel, and Funny Car is the pinnacle of the sport. There's not even an IHRA professional Top Fuel, Funny right. Car situation. So now you gotta you got to figure there's thousands and thousands of people that drag race, but there's what, 12, 30 people, something like that, that make a living doing it, right? <laughs> so, right. but yet if you look at road race, circle track, dirt track, I mean, there is a way more ways to make money being a professional racer you can dude you could race sprint cars on a saturday night or seven nights a week you know just traveling around racing sprint cars and make a living doing it you know or oh. dirt modifieds so well, for sure i mean you know unless you're under a rock really if you're a motorsports fan i mean kenny wallace is coming back to race dirt full time yeah i mean are you kidding me kenny wallace yeah. I mean, he was big when I was growing up, when I was like in my 20s, NASCAR, Bush Series, Winston Cup. Um, so, I mean, so, yeah, the opportunity aspect of it, for sure, 100 uh, percent. When it comes to drag racing, we're, we're um, professional wise, make us say not professional, making a living doing it. We are way down the totem pole. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody a, a, a few weeks back about some of the challenges NASCAR is having with their up and coming drivers that are coming through that now uh, the contracts that drivers used to get, let's say 10 years ago. So let's say back to, you know, uh, 2008 and before those contracts had a lot of commas and zeros to them, oh, for those, yeah. you know, for their salaries. Nowadays, NASCAR teams are getting drivers that'll drive a car and their base salary will be less than a hundred grand a year. And all, the only way they make any money is incentives, bonuses, uh, personal services agreement. So the, the contracts have been driven back down because now guys will do it for less money just so they can get in the sport. Well, that's and the, get to that point. the biggest you, – you were going in the right direction I was going. The, the biggest problem in all forms of motorsports I see is, yes, I don't care what sport it is, there's a lot of money involved with the the people that are into it, right? You don't have you don't have a guy that doesn't have some sort of income generally racing, right? I mean, maybe you and I <laughs> are on the bottom <laughs> scale of that, but but what right. I'm saying is like you you touched on it in a previous podcast, like you have somebody or yourself or a business or something that has some sort of money which now the downside of that is the people that don't have the money and get passed over they may have better talent as a driver or what a rider whatever game you play but they're getting passed over because so and so is paying to drive the car 
that's what people don't realize. A lot of like even in drag racing, a lot of these people that are racing top fuel, funny car, pro stock, alcohol dragster, what whatever class, even NASCAR, they're they're paying to be there. They're not getting paid. So how does one make a living at something where you have to pay a million dollars in order to get in the seat? Oh, for sure. You got companies and see, that's the other thing. You know, you take, you said that you take a driver, let's take somebody that has a, a, a connection. Like right now we can talk about NASCAR. Everything in NASCAR right now is about Martin Truex Jr. And Kurt Busch. They both have money because Toyota is severely, or I shouldn't say severely, significantly invested in, in Martin Truex Jr. Where's he going to go? Toyota's going to have a say in that because they're invested in Martin, right? He's got a huge fan base. And then you got Kurt Busch. What's Kurt Busch have? Monster. Yep. Monster. Can you say lots of commas and zeros? So here, here you have somebody they, that they're tied together. Uh, what, a few years ago, we were talking about Kevin Harvick. How Kevin Harvick, you know, he was Dale Earnhardt's replacement. How he was tied to Chevrolet. And even though he went to Tony Stewart Racing, or Stewart Haas, rather, and when they were like, oh, we're going to Ford, everybody's like, oh, Kevin Harvick's going to leave. No, he's not leaving. Yeah, but he, but you did touch on something, too, that I wanted to bring up. A lot of people, you know, and I'm not trying to say when we bring up this paying to drive thing as as a hater nation kind of thing. Like, if I, if I was in that situation, hell yeah, you bet your ass I'd be doing the same thing. <clears throat> now... But that doesn't necessarily mean that daddy's paying every time. Like you said, Bush has Monster, Truex has Toyota, right? They developed those relationships and created those, like we talked about in a previous podcast, marketing. They marketed in themselves to get that deal. Now, so therefore, they're necessarily not paying, but it also, on the retrospect, it takes money to get into that arena to play with those big dogs. Right. There's a big oh, oh. gap between the people at the top and the people at the bottom. The people in the middle, like everybody always says, the middle class always always loses out. Well, yeah, because you ha- how do you get from being the average Joe to just all of a sudden, aside from being in the right place at the right time? And unfortunately, that's what a lot of motorsports is, is being in the right place at the right time. Oh, I, you're absolutely right. And you and you have to continue to work on things like that and develop yourself. I mean, let's um, I'm trying to think like if I had to rank like a, a huge story, let, let's talk about something that climbed up. We could take somebody like Antron Brown, right? Most people in today's racing only know Antron Brown as a top fuel driver. They don't remember that he rode pro stock motorcycle. Yep. Found out that the army was done with pro stock motorcycle, and he was like, "Okay, I've got to reinvent myself. I got to take a next step." He goes out and gets top fuel license. Here, once again, you, you know, he you constantly have to continue to improve yourself or push and find your deals. Most people don't realize Antron Brown, huge, huge Toyota backing. What's DSR? A Mopar company. Yep. That's a Mopar organization. Anton Brown, he has Toyota. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that, that's why people ask me all the time, like, why do you drive so much stuff? Like, you know, when that one, one minute you're in a funny car, next thing you're in an alcohol car, next thing I see you in a bracket car, because I'm trying to find my way. And, I, and I'm willing, and because I love racing so much that I want to drive any and everything. Because I feel like if I can succeed in all arenas, Hopefully, one of these irons will catch at one point, and I'll get asked to drive something even bigger and better, you know, like full time or or whatever. Like it's you have to to dabble in certain areas. I mean, I'm not gonna say no to an opportunity. I mean, that's how I got these funny car deals or these alcohol deals. Well, it's because right place, right time. But I also was willing to put the effort forward to get the licenses or whatever to do this stuff. It costs a lot of money to do that, but I acquired back in financing or funding from my sponsors that wanted to help me grow within my world. So, you know, what's better? I, I don't know. You know, is it better well, to just focus on, okay, I, you know, everybody gives me shit all the time. Like, dude, oh, you're finally racing super. I think I raced super comp twice this year. And 
got waxed. The I think I forgot to turn the air bottle on on the first race, and then the next race was oh Fontana. Yeah, I lost third round, but and I because I like took too much stripe. But I mean, but I've been racing alcohol cars and like all these other things is like where my focus is because that's where the opportunities were. If somebody, I, I say all the time, like, I think we touched on this too. If, I, if somebody said, hit me up and be like, hey, you interested in driving a monster truck? Hell yeah. You know, call like, me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, or you want to drive a, a dirt modified, you want to drive a NASCAR? Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've gone and done the racing schools for like the late model stuff, and my wife was better at it than I was. But um, the, even like speedway i've ridden speedway motorcycles you know all these things it just because you never know like you never know i'm not riding a motorcycle speedway motorcycles don't even have brakes dude look it up guess what i we would need a new pharmaceutical company as a sponsor for the podcast because <laughs> i would need a lot of medication to get on a motorcycle <laughs> and go faster than my zuma yeah exactly <laughs> No, I, the whole thing with with the opportunities and making way. I, I mean, right now, everybody the the big push right now. You're here, reading it all over social media. You know, Tanner Gray, he's going to leave an HRA Pro Stock and he's going to NASCAR. And it's like, what? But if you really think about it, if he's done what he heart, needs to do. Yeah, his heart's in NASCAR. Great, and he's done. What more can he do other than win a championship? Or if he does win a championship this year. What more do you do in NHRA? Well, yeah, I won a world championship already in my second year, and shit, I can probably go and make a hell of a lot more money racing NASCAR. And his family has money. So if he can go over there and start the climb at age 19, 20 years old. Oh, yeah. Well, then then start the climb, dude. He'll be I a mean, superstar many- at 21. Right. I, and, you know, in in the Xfinity series is all about the young young guns, all about it. And so, you know, when you when you got people like Kyle Busch that are getting, you know, getting upset about the whole young gun mentality and they are walking around with chips on their shoulder about beating up on young guns. Well, heck, yeah, it's all the opportunity. Who cares? It's still great publicity. It's still motorsports. It's still marketing. And you still have to get out there and find where you fit in and then try to to make the best of the situation that, that you have given to you. Yeah, that's one way. that's one plus I, I like about drag racing is the fact that you can be a rookie at forty five and still end up being a popular driver or whatever. Like it's not you don't have to be nineteen. You know, why did I'm, you have to pick forty five? I just to say? I just threw out a number. But what I'm saying is like it's not <laughs> It's not like, oh, if you didn't make, if you didn't start driving f- top fuel full time by the time you're 23, like you're out. You know what I mean? Like, luckily, yeah, I look, I look like I'm 20 on a good day, but <laughs> you know, it's, you don't have to be, I mean, look at all the people that are driving fuel, funny car and top fuel right now. Like, I mean, you have, who is the, who's the considered the young people, right? You got Sean, you got Leah. Richie, uh, Richie, uh, Jr. Jr. and the the Force Girls. Right. Oh, and Blake, Blake. Well, and Blake, yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, Blake, Blake. I think just turned thirty. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I mean, and they're the young people. So, which is good for a guy like me that's trying to do it. I, heck, I just turned thirty three. So, oh, wait, yeah, no, am I thirty three? Yeah, I'm thirty three. <laughs> oh gee whiz. but you know yeah, uh, 33 like a decade ago for me yeah 33 but don't look a day over 20 so uh, you're lie tell it how you want to hey i mean aside from the double chin you know it's it's i'm trying to fill out you know hey <laughs> you know i'll we'll, we'll smack your smack. no and and how about I mean, let's think about dirt track I, I mean you know you talked about the chili bowl you know a lot of guys are all into it and i'm kind of the wing sprints and the 410s i watch that stuff on my phone because there's a lot of good snapchats and instagram videos but you know i think about the money that it costs us to, to to invest into that those guys got just as nice haulers oh hell yeah and, and junk that we do in drag racing i i don't think there's um 
an expense level where you go, well, one costs less than the other. No, I, no, no, no. I, I just, I don't see it. If someone said, hey, look, you know, you spend 300000 a year in drag racing running top sportsmen, and you can come over here and you can spend that same $300,000 and we're going to run, you know, 40% more races and you're going to make more money than you do over there. Someone's going to come show me because I'm like, what? Are you for real? Yep. Well, uh, look, at these, look, a- look at these off-road guys, like the Lucas Oil off-road stuff. Like, they, that stuff is so popular in every, I mean, at least on the West Coast. I don't know if it is like, the, I mean, you guys have Crandon in, what, Wisconsin or whatever. But here it is like, if you race off-road trucks, like, you are cool. <laughs> but they race. Yeah, not so much out here. Yeah, but they race, I think the Lucas series is 10 races. But it's only five weekends. So what they do is they pack it in, which helps the racer try to get involved, right? So they right. they race Saturday night and Sunday. So which they only have to travel to, you know, say Utah or whatever the race is one time instead of having two races there in Vegas or wherever. They do it. They combine it all in. And I mean, it's a sellout crowd. So I I don't know. There's There's many ways to skin the cat, but... You know, yeah, it's it's motorsports. I mean, in the end, you know, I, obviously, you know, we're talking about you know how different opportunities work. Like, you know, most people know, and if they don't, they shouldn't by now. You know, I'm a hired gun. I I, I don't own anything that I drive. I drive for a family, and I'm fortunate for that, and I'm lucky about that. I have great companies that that backed me relationship wise that I brought into the co- into the family c- company to help support it and offset it and, and so forth. But at the end of the day, this is still something that people choose to do that they don't have to do. We're Absolutely. in the RV business. That's once again, that's an industry. That's something that people choose to do. They don't have to do. They, they don't need, they don't have to have an RV trailer. They have to have groceries. Yep. You know, absolutely. So, that I mean, that's why I have a day job too. Like, they don't, and even in our our day job, I'm out there hustling race packs because I mean, do you have do you have to have a data logger to go down the racetrack or around the racetrack or whatever? No. Mm. Is it going to drastically help you if you do? Yes, uh, absolutely. So it's the same thing. I mean, there's yin and yang. You're going to have the people that that have opinions about both. And that's what makes the, the industry go around as a whole and, and whatnot. But I don't know why I pick drag racing over everything else, but it's just something about stepping on the gas and getting hit in the chest with a sledgehammer. It feels like in a top fuel car that there's nothing like it, my friend. <laughs> well, for me, it was the whole economics. And then the, that whole, you go around in a circle, around in a circle, around in a circle. And then all of a sudden, the same thing that you've been passing is now the finish line. Yeah. And I don't get it. I, you passed it 500 times before or 499. And then on the fifth hundred time, oh, that's the finish line. I mean, I don't get it. In drag racing, we start at one point and when we get to the end. It's the finish line. And it's only the finish line that one time till you yeah. come back around. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That Maybe. Brain, I, don't know. I know we're talking about motorsports in general and like the different, the different stuff, but I just thought of something right now. So you hear a lot of podcasts or ESPN, Fox, whatever they talk about. Motorsports in general is declining. Why, you know, oh, what are they going to do? What, you know, it honestly, I feel like that statement is very regional because look at red, you know, all the East Coast. Like, you see, you're kind of like in the hotbed of any sort of motorsport. You live in Indiana, right? I agree to a certain extent when it comes to like West Coast stuff because. I mean, yeah, Pomona, is, I mean, NHRA is out here, whatever. There's, you know, it's packed still. But you got to understand, it could probably be even more packed if we weren't in California. The reason being is there is so much that you can do in one day in Orange County. So why is somebody going to want to go spend $75 to go sweat their ass off and pay for a $25 beer <laughs> when you could go to the beach you can go snowboarding you can go to the lake you can go the movies you can i mean like 
there is nothing in Orange County that the world doesn't like. We have everything, and you can do all that. So, the, like, people's options are endless. So, but versus for you guys, like, and I'm not saying like you live in like Podunk wherever, but let's be <laughs> honest. Let's be honest. Like, you probably, I mean, you don't have Hollywood in your backyard, right? So you can't go to the Pantages <laughs> Theater, or you can like. You, right. you just can't do that stuff or you can't go to New York, you know, just jumping like people live in New York. Oh, yeah, we went to Broadway or like there's there's so many options and, and kids these days aren't so much interested in cars like that goes back to like all the kids around here like that are turning 16 and stuff. They didn't give a shit about getting their driver's license because they well, Uber everywhere. They they skate, they walk. What I mean. So how are you going to get into cars and want to go to a racetrack when you don't even care about getting a driver's license? You know, that's a, that's a true point. And I'll tell you, I was listening um, to a SBJ, a sports business journal deal. I was listening the other day. Uh, they're talking, it's not just motorsports now. Now it, it, college football is getting wrapped into to declining attendance, right? Attendance and ratings. Uh, because kids are like, they're not going to the games. You know, they're building, you know, they're expanding uh, what's whatever the stadium is in Alabama. They're expanding the stadium. But is it in the student section? No, it's the luxury boxes for the alumni folks, right? So I get it. Motorsports is declining. Yes. Why is it declining? Well, one, attendance is going to start to, to dwindle down based on cost, but also on activities. Uh, you know, what is it? Reading had a good, good crowd. Um, St. Louis had a good crowd. But at the same time, you know, St. Louis having a great crowd for three days in a row versus being somewhere like Topeka that might have a great crowd for three days in a row. I think it's not necessarily that it's declining. It's that the options are out there in today's society. Yeah. Timeliness of, of doing other activities uh, where people are spending their money. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, you have you have these kids, too. And, and I honestly feel like part of this is a social media problem, right? Because all kids everybody wants instant gratification, right? So why, why even go, why even go to a drag race? Why even go to a movie or why go to a, the beach or what? Like if you can portray yourself and know all this stuff by just checking your Snapchat or checking your Facebook feed, you already know the results. You already know Like, so why go spend all the money to go? And I feel like that's part of the problem. Like everybody's living in such an alternate universe it feels like like oh uh, yeah look at me like i'm so cool on social media but yet they're locked in their bedroom because they don't go outside <laughs> like so it, but they know everything about everything so why you know the luxury of going to the track and be like yeah did you see did you see what, what happened the other day like robert Hyde's body blow up in the final <laughs> and and almost go into the stands or whatever like it happened i mean yeah i was watching it on the live feed but you go on Facebook 35 seconds later and there's 900 videos of it. So Yo. why, I mean, yeah, the race is in St. Louis, but like, even if you're in St. Louis, why, even, why do you need to go when you can literally just look at your feed and see all this stuff? And it is, it's a double edged sword from that standpoint, because that also affects how sponsors spend their money. Absolutely. You know, you know, maybe I just need to spend more money on my digital presence uh, online and social media than I do for putting money in, in a racer or a race team or a racetrack event on a so social media influencer. Right. <laughs> exactly. I need to get uh, I need to get Billy Bob Joe, who was standing on the fence, who reposted and shared that video of Robert Height's body flying through the sky 666 times. I need to have him on my payroll, not spend uh, three quarters of a million dollars for 10 races with Billy Bob Drag Racer. Yep, exactly. You know, but what everybody gets so caught up. I mean, this we'll talk about this more when we talk social media, but a lot of people don't realize, okay, yeah, if I have 50,000 followers and I post a picture, 
50,000 people are not going to see that picture. <laughs> no. Nope. So everything is so inflated and so crazy that that's why I say everybody lives in an alternate universe. <laughs> like with, like with anything, you know, it, it's, it's how you want to portray yourself to everybody else, whether that's going to the races, social media, whatever. Everything is so positive in my life. Yeah. That's how it's portrayed. No one, no one sees the pain, the blood, the sweat, the tears, how many times you knocked your own self out in the shop trying to get something done. Yeah. And that's what uh, this, yeah. that's what this podcast is all about. We're, we're bringing that stuff to light. You know, we want people to realize that, Hey man, we're just like you guys. Like we're just struggling too. We're, we're no alternate universe people. You know, everybody thinks one thing, but we're here to tell you that we're just average Joe's man trying to trying to make it to, you know, that's. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's funny. I go to, to go back to think about the different forms of racing. I'm looking at the sheet and it's like, man, what, what would you do? What would you do? Would you go back? Would you do it now? Would you, would you, could you change now? Do you think that you'd pull it off as a big risk? You know, uh, is, is the, re- could the reward be worth the risk? of embarrassment and going from where you are, like you said, middle of the pack, drop all the way back down to the bottom to have to start your climb back up the chain. Uh, you know, that's, man, that's just, uh, that's just like we're doing here with the podcast, reinventing ourselves. Is that risk worth the reward? And uh, right now I'm, g- I'm going to tell you that my risk is staying in drag racing and continuing to uh, Put, put myself or my family or my sponsors out there ahead of everybody else and do the best I can for them. And hopefully it'll reward in the end. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm the same way, you know, I, I'm, I'm all in when it comes to the drag racing thing. It's all I've ever really wanted to, to do or be. And if I can take steps forward to do that, you know, but in, and if along the way an opportunity came in another form of motorsport and somebody asked me to get involved, I, I would definitely look at it. I wouldn't say no right away. You know, but drag racing has my heart fully right now. But that doesn't mean, you know, as my son gets older or something and he wants to go do something else, then we'll we'll look into that, you know. But for right now and where I'm looking to, to go as an individual, I mean, motorsports, I'll just say motorsports as a whole is where I want to be. But drag racing has the majority of that. And with that, I mean, I'm sure you agree, but I guess we can leave it on that. I mean, at the end of the day, motorsports is badass. We could debate this all day long, what's better. But in my eyes, I appreciate everybody that does any sort of motorsport. Absolutely. Be passionate about whatever form of motorsports that you're involved in, whether you're a fan or a competitor, a supporter, a sponsor, a media personnel, whatever the case may be. Just be passionate about it so that we can continue to grow and uh, not fall into the wayside like maybe uh, underwater basket weaving. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if, if motorsports isn't your thing, that's okay, too. Just like Don said, be passionate at what you do and 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 try to live the dream as long as you can. I mean, that's what, what life's all about, having a good time and enjoying it with the people that you do that with. So, but... As usual, we couldn't do this without uh, racepack.com, dragsearchersale.com, and Voice America for asking us to do this. We appreciate uh, you guys listening in. and uh, we will All be- five of you. Yeah, yeah, all five of you. We appreciate that, and uh, we hope to increase that as we go. But, uh, Don, thanks again, and uh, good luck this weekend if you're racing. Yeah, you too, Cam, and we'll catch you on the next one. Let's put it-